Hello everyone, I'm John and welcome to another Arty inspired meet and greet hosted by Shopkeep Arty, the online platform helping everyone to learn new things, be inspired and have fun creating. Today we're going to be going for gold when we join Liz Chatterton, a professional watercolour and mixed media artist to talk about her fascination with using gold leaf in her work. We'll touch upon the history of gold in art, as well as some of her tips and tricks for using it to make your art pop. Um, compared to our art tutorial webinars with leading artists from around the world, these shows are different. We aim to demystify or at least make you think differently about things connected to the art world, be it people, products or techniques. So sit back, relax, preferably with a cup of tea in hand and get ready to soak up something inspiring. For our patrons level three and above who are joining us live, you have the opportunity of helping me with the questions being asked and therefore can influence the direction we take with the show. Um, we've done a little bit of preparation, but it's pretty fluid, so we'll see where we get to. Um, simply type your questions in the Q&A, just like we do in our RT class webinars. So, Liz, welcome today. I'm looking forward to looking forward to this one. Hello, I'm very pleased to be back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. And I'm looking behind you. You've 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 put a few um, paintings up there. I can see a little bit of gold shimmering away in the background. Yeah, if I just pan that up, you can just see. Oh, I've wow. hung a few on the wall for you. Wow, There's this loads is where everything of... collapsed. That's fantastic. First of all, maybe just give a little bit of a summary to people out there about your background and what drew you to using art, uh, using gold in your art in the first place. Um, well, what I love painting is is everyday animals and sort of um, celebrating the the ordinary, the ones that we sort of slightly overlook. Um, and I guess it was a four years ago, something like that, I, I wanted to paint some sparrows because I think sparrows are beautiful birds, but they're very small and brown and ordinary and we sort of overlooked them and they were um, their numbers have plummeted. And I was thinking about this, how do you celebrate them? And gold is about saying uh, in, in art and in sort of history, it's always been very precious, something you respect, revere, um, and I thought, actually, if I could introduce some gold, it would show how important these little brown drab birds are. So I, you know, did a quick Google, as one does, you know, watched a YouTube tutorial and thought, oh, gold leaf, that's it. So, um, and I started adding gold to my paintings and loved it. And frankly, if it doesn't move, it gets gold leaf on in my house. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> ah, so you use it quite a bit. So, so yeah, yeah quite a bit. Yeah. Yes, you get quite carried away because it is just. It does give such a pop. You know, you said in your introduction, yeah. and it is glittery and gorgeous, and it does give that feeling of nobility to even the humblest of subjects. So I do have to speak severely to myself on occasion, say no, no, no gold. <laughs> but um, yes, everything in the house has got little bits of gold sort of stuck to it, really. Oh, uh, that's good. That's good. And I guess the the nice thing about it is, and we touched on this when we spoke before, is that when you do your artwork, you you can the gold is almost like the last bit you do so you can take a judgment can't you on does this painting deserve it at this <laughs> yes um because of the way i work the gold goes on last because um i'm working in water media it won't go on over the gold leaf whereas if you were working in oils or acrylics you would put the gold on first and you can then layer over the top, but you can't do that with inks more to colour. So yes, it goes on last and it's quite transformational and it can also hide a multitude of sins. Oh, well, that's always a good one as well. Oh, I like that a lot, yes. Um, so let's touch a little bit then on the history of gold. And, and so I, I think you were saying it dates back a long time Yes, yeah, right back to sort of ancient Egyptians. Um, if you think about all those beautiful artefacts that came out of sort of Tutankhamun's tomb, and they used to use um, gold leaf to embellish 
um, sculptures and the ceremonial masks and all the things like that. So it goes back thousands of years and then sort of coming forwards, um, if if you think about illuminated manuscripts, all the sort of medieval um, Book of Kells, things like that, the beautiful letters, they were all embellished with gold um, and, and it's been used a lot in, well, in, in all religious um, traditions. But if you think about in sort of Christian religious tr tradition, you know, halos, your halo is always gold, but think about or oh, um, say in Buddhism, think about in Thailand, all those sort of reclining Buddhas that are gold leafed and um, in India, in Hin Hinduism, you know, it, and, and actually in Islam as well, where you cannot depict living creatures. A lot of the, uh, the art is all about calligraphy and a lot of it is gold, shell gold, which is a special sort of almost like a paint but made with pure gold so it's um yeah right across and then coming forward you've got sort of artists like Klimt who we talked about um who is so famous for his gold paintings but he only did them for 10 years of his life of his painting life even though they're the ones that we all think of when when we think of you know Klimt's sort of gold paintings why was that why was that did, did you have you found out no idea <laughs> if any of I you don't... know out there please do message us yeah. um but yeah think... it's interesting 10 years i mean I, I guess you can go in fads can't you as an artist and try different media and well, then move do. on to something else absolutely you go in phases and you develop things and you move on and you revisit but i don't know if there was a specific thing that stopped him but it was a very specific 10 years of his painting life that he did his gold paintings all right right maybe so, maybe yeah maybe just uh ran out of money <laughs> ran out of money or maybe the gold price went through the roof and he yes, thought, well, I'm not doing exactly, that. Exactly. Yeah. But, it, but it is interesting isn't it how it is such a i mean it is a global thing that every religion every type of style dating back to you know for all of time really that gold has been there as the thing that can elevate something or make it feel special or you know it it, it is gold i mean uh, compared well, to it's all the just other rare isn't it it's a rare metal um so it has that value and it's also very easy to work in some ways because it's such a soft metal but it, it is so beautiful and it doesn't tarnish and all those sorts of things but there was wasn't it Sort of at one point when they discovered aluminium, at one point aluminium used to be more expensive than gold. I'm sure it was one of those that were the sort of Louis the fifteenth or something of France used to eat of aluminium plates because right. it was more expensive than gold at right. one point. Right, but then yeah. the rarity of gold came back in and that's always been the gold standard. Yeah. yeah. And I guess, and then Jennifer pointed out, you, obviously wedding rings are traditionally gold to, to symbolise. I know exactly. Um, yeah. But then, you know, obviously you do other get other things, platinum, and you know, there's all these other sort of precious metals. But as you say, it does come back to gold all the time because of mm -hmm. the qualities that it's got, and it's got that good rarity and and qualities balance going for yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. Very good. And so how do so you obviously don't get blocks of gold and uh, melt them down and pour them onto your oh, you obviously use gold leaf, um, which is of, now how first of all, and, and there's different types and we can go into the, the imitation gold as well. But the genuine gold leaf, how 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 is that made? Well, it um, is actually beaten by hand. Um, or or always used to be, I mean, it's been automated now, but if you go on to good old YouTube and um, Google, you'll find um, chaps with very large hammers bashing bits of metal, and it is literally beaten gold, and it is beaten so thin that if you hold it to the light, you can see the light through it. So gold leaf is literally a sheet of gold, but it's beaten with huge lump hammers thinner and thinner and thinner um, and it's an amazing process it's worth just 
find finding the video because there'll be one on there um to to watch the process very little is done by hand now but i think there is a firm in i'm gonna say venice it, it's italy so i think it's venice that's still beat by hand wow amazing wow yeah. that is amazing that'd be an incredible thing to go and look at wouldn't it Oh yes, and and so when you buy, uh, and we've we've hosted a, a couple of artists that have used gold leaf in their workshops when we've done that, and they're they're kind of separated. It's a bit like I don't know when you get some sliced salmon or cheese, and they're in the little, and you kind of and they're separated by little paper things, yeah. and you kind of take take it up. So how many would you get in a pack traditionally? Are they sort of? Let me show you if yeah, you want. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, yeah. I've got a little. Are we okay for the overhead here? Yeah. Yeah. So this, this is real gold, um, and it tends to come in little eight centimeter square booklets. And let's open to one that's not quite so squished. There we go. So that is a little sheet, and I will carefully blow that corner down. Right. You have to make yeah. sure that um, if I just wiggle it around, you'll see the shine on that just beautiful and um you've got to make sure all your doors are shut no fan no air conditioning because otherwise you'd just be in a gold sort of snowstorm it's so so light and delicate um well that one's got folded over so you can get this is called loose um loose leaf gold or you can get what's called um transfer let me show you and that's actually stuck to the paper so that you put it onto the gold and then pull the paper, uh, sorry, onto the glue and pull the paper away. So that's a lot easier to handle. The loose stuff can literally blow away if you're not careful, but that's, that's transfer leaf. Yeah, I think that's what, when we did uh, Carl Griffith's one, he used the transfer leaf. Version. Yeah, it's a lot easier to handle. Yes. But it's just if you're going into really deeply moulded, say you were wanting to gild a, a statue or a picture frame or something, you'd need to use the loose because then it can go into all the dips and troughs. Got you, got you. Uh, and so, and so, how much, how much would something like that cost? Right. So a little booklet like this, I say eight by eight centimeters. 25 sheets in it would be i looked up the price this oh, morning no. oh no <laughs> 30 pounds and 90p right so about 30 pounds for that yes um, which you think which you think oh well it's not too bad because you've got 30 sheets but actually the sheets are very small so you can't really use it but i guess you can transfer the different bits to the different areas so if you were doing i don't know a yeah. gold line or something like that Yes, because, I mean, if you're only adding a few, I don't know, oh, just a little, say you were doing some insects and you wanted gold wings on a bumblebee or whatever, it's a tiny amount, but then you would have the prestige of saying, oh, and it's 24 karat gold. The problem is if you sort of look over my shoulder and look at the size of those, then it would actually be a substantial amount. But, yes. you know, yes. it, it doesn't have to be expensive. And then if you go to imitation gold leaf, it's not expensive at all no. um so hence you can sort of well as to say if it doesn't move fast enough you can gold leaf it really yeah <laughs> yes, yeah um now jane has said um that she's tried uh two uh, since they she spoke about it um and it worked quite well on canvas but on watercolor paper paper she had a terrible time getting it to adhere um would you yeah. Could you understand why i would imagine it probably depends on the watercolor paper type but um i i, I don't know and it depends on the uh, adhesive or the the size that it should be using yeah i mean the, the process that you go through is um the smoother the surface the shinier the end result so that's something to think about so traditionally they used to build up layer upon layer sanding in between to get the smoothest surface possible to get ultimate shine so on canvas or watercolor paper because you've got a texture that will affect the shine of it um, 
So it used to be put onto a base of, it's called a bowl, B-O-L-E, of, of red oxide, because then the red sort of glows through the, the gold and gives it a really lovely warm glow. And then you apply size, which is posh name for glue, um, <laughs> which uh, you, you put on and you let it dry till it's just slightly tacky, a bit like a, it's as sticky as a post-it note that's um and it dries to tack then you put on the gold and then you you brush off any excess so why it wouldn't be sticking i have no idea because the gold size can go on to pretty much any surface yeah. and I've, I've got a bit ready if you want me to yeah, show no, you we will definitely off. be doing just to uh, let yeah. you know out at home where we will be doing a few little practical <laughs> uh, things as well. So don't yeah. worry, that will be coming up. Um, and and I mean, size is quite a, a te I mean, great substance with regards to putting the gold, but can be a, a quite terrible to the brushes. So I've heard. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So there's different sorts. I mean, also, I should say there's all sorts of gilding. There's water gilding and oh gilding using gold size so you can get super techy with it i think the way i put gold on probably would give a proper gilder to nightmares because i tend to slap it on and as long as the end result is what i want that's fine but yeah so um i use an acrylic gold size i'll hold it up to the camera okay. um which is it takes about 15 minutes to dry and it dries to that tack and it stays workable for uh, 24 30 hours maybe so that's called its open time so you could put it on you know the night before make sure it's super dry next morning still sort of use it um yeah you would not put it on with your best watercolor brushes because it is it's an acrylic glue it's it's not pva but it's um you know it is an acrylic glue yeah so yeah. you can get different ones that dry slower or quicker and the quicker it dries again the less shiny the end result because the the brush strokes will show if it dries really quickly the brush strokes tend to show more if you've got a really slow drying one it gives it time to all settle out and go really smooth and flat so you've, you've okay. got that sort of balance of patience versus result. And obviously I've gone for the quickest drying one possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> patience, what's that? <laughs> um, so um, Jacqueline said that she's always found it difficult to get off the backing paper on the gold. And I think we'll we'll cover that a little bit when we do a little bit of a mm -hmm. practical thing at the moment. Um, Janet and Janet's asked, what, what about the price of the transfer gold sheets as well? Do you know whether that would compare, be similar it, to the ones in the loose it's very loop? Similar. Yeah, <laughs> loose and transfer is really similar um, because it's about the price of the gold, not the price of the paper. So, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it will vary because you can get 24 carat, you can get 23 carat, 22, you know, and the different colours. But that's the sort of ish price. Yeah. Um, Whereas the the imitation gold is is way 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 cheaper, like yeah. So let's back. talk about let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. So maybe um I'll just uh, share your table. My table. Indeed. So let me show you a little. Um, I've got piles of things everywhere. Well, let me show you this one. So this is imitation gold, but this is a variegated one. Let me bring okay. that. Up. See, it's they pass electricity through it and you get all these beautiful sort of patterns and colours in it, which is rather gorgeous. Um, let me just grab this little brand new packet for you. And is that is that almost like an aluminium or something? And they're just changing the colour of it. Is that basically made? It's got loads and loads of copper in it. Ah, okay. So um look. There we go. Shiny, shiny. Yeah. So that's yeah. imitation. And let me compare it to the real deal. You know, you would be very hard pushed, especially on my camera, but very hard pushed to know they were different. Yeah. The big yeah. difference is because it's this has got copper in it, you have to seal this or it will tarnish over time. 
Okay. Whereas real, real gold does not tarnish, which is why our wedding rings stay beautiful and pure and lovely. Yeah. But um, but yes, yeah, so that, that is imitation gold leaf. And a booklet, like this booklet, which is 14 centimetres, so that's eight. So it's what, three times the size of this? Yeah. Two pounds. Really? Wow. Yeah. So, you know, this you can afford to... Go for it. Gold leaf your dining room table if you <laughs> yes, want. Yes. You know, um, it, it's not expensive. It's actually slightly thicker than real gold leaf. Um, so it's it's a little bit easier to work with anyway. Right. But it's just beautiful. I mean, look at the shine on that. It's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so, so those pieces that are behind you, Liz, when I show yeah. your, are, are those with imitation gold or? They are, yes. Oh. Yes, so that's all imitation gold because of the, the size of the, the artwork. And, and because when I started, it was, you know, I, I literally did watch a YouTube video and thought, oh, how hard can this be? Um, and have learned as I've gone along. So I would certainly prefer to do all my experiments with the cheap and cheerful stuff, which is still gorgeous. Yeah. Um, rather so that, than... So that imitation, that, that imitation pack that you just showed us with that yes. larger sheet for two pounds, those are the things that you use pretty much yeah, mostly absolutely. on your... And the other one that had a different patina to it, do you sometimes yeah. use that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you can get, I'm just seeing if this one's, a, yeah, this is, this is a slightly different one. So sorry, this is, share all, that. yeah, sorry, variegated gold leaf. So this has got blue, blue sort of petroly marks to it almost. Um, and I, I love this. So yes, I might well introduce some of that. And you can actually get it with all sorts of different patterns. Um, they just process it in different ways. So there are really, some just beautiful ones. Um, it's it's gorgeous. Uh, and sometimes I sort of mix that in. I mean, you've got to be careful because it could be quite obtrusive, you know, in the pattern. But if it yeah. works with what you're doing, it's really lovely to, to introduce it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm um, almost imagining some sort of uh, African art there with uh, some sort of uh, leopard skin, you know. Oh, God. Of, it, would, it would work quite yeah. well for that, wouldn't it? Well, um, you, could do, you could do that. And I mean, the other thing I was just going to show you, I mean, you can also get silver leaf. This is imitation silver leaf and copper leaf as well. And I've used copper quite a lot, which is really nice for more for wildlife type subjects. It does stick to everything, I told you. <laughs> I mean, luckily this is just imitation, so we don't have to worry. Yeah. If this was real, I would be collecting every tiny scrap of <laughs> waste and you would recycle it. Yeah. You, you would keep it, recycle it, or make it into shell gold so that you're not wasting anything. Yeah. And, and Jennifer's asked, is gold spray effective? Ah, that's an interesting question. I personally, let me move those carefully, don't, I don't think anything quite has the shine of the gold leaf. So I, I've got a couple of options here. Um, Sorry, again, let me bring that into that again. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep you on your yeah, toes. On, on my toes, there yeah. you go. So this... Um, is a gold acrylic paint um, and it's the goldest gold I've come across acrylic paint. It's a Stuart Semple one. Um, and it, you know, it's a tiny little bottle and that, that was quite expensive. But you know, if you're just doing a tiny highlight, that actually is a really good gold paint. And on a, a thin line, you probably wouldn't see a huge amount of difference but ordinary gold paint from sort of Thaler Rowney or Windsor and Newton um, isn't great I don't think okay. what is nice I don't know if you've come across these aqua bronzes um, they're from Schmincke and it's actually a powder let me 
I had to, I've managed to break the lid on that one, so I've had to decant it into this. This is not the time to sneeze. So it's just gold powder. Oh, wow. And, it, and it's got a binder in it, and you can mix it with water, and that's not bad at all. Oh, so it does mix okay with with water, does it? This is designed to. It's got a binder right. in it, so it's right. designed to, to mix with water. Or you can sprinkle it into a damp wash if you just want a little sheen. It's very pretty. Okay, that's a good idea, isn't it? And again, that comes in copper, silver, whatever. But say this, this is a Winsor & Newton gold ink, which in the bottle looks all super and shiny and is distinctly disappointing. Right. It's okay, but it it just doesn't have the shine of... of um, real gold and the other form that you sometimes get gold leaf in is this like which is flakes okay so so that goes everywhere too oh if you thought the glitter went everywhere well gold flakes yes um so i I, I have a pet hate against glitter to be honest with you but um... oh this is not your your afternoon then john no no i don't i don't like the this look is of that. Posh, this is very posh glitter posh basically. Glitter, yeah. um <laughs> And yes, and that goes everywhere. I used to wear contact lenses and a bit of gold leaf under your contact lens really hurts. Oh, um, <laughs> but um, that's another way of applying it. But you don't quite get the same high shine as putting it on with a sheet of gold leaf. But that's just broken up gold leaf um, imitation. Oh, and the other thing I pulled out, this is just gold watercolour. It's a Japanese one. Okay. Um, which, again, because glittery watercolours are having quite a moment, and they do look nice. You can use them on black watercolour paper or just as little highlights. But, again, just hasn't got the shine of real gold leaf. So there are lots of options, but yeah. nothing quite beats the real stuff. No, so so let's just go through a, a a few of those product names for people, just in case they they did want to pink something. So, um, the first of all the the sheets that you've got, what where are, where are they from? So that the 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 original the real sheets and the the imitation gold sheets. Where, okay. Where... Um, I mean, you can get them from all sorts of places. Uh, the the supplier that I really like is called Rights of Lim. So that's W-R-G-H-T-S, so yeah. Right yeah. of Lim, L-Y-M-M. <laughs> and they, I mean, it's just like being in a sweetie shop looking on their website. <laughs> it's gorgeous. You can buy imitation gold leaf off, you know, Amazon or eBay or whatever. Can I just show you something? Because I'm, this is my salutary lesson to people. Yeah. Right. So I went on to, I think it was Amazon, and it was a bargain. And I thought, oh, and it was coming from China. And I ordered, I think, 300 sheets of it. And it turned up, and it is disgusting. Now, I I don't know if you can it's see. Like a, it's like a wrapping like, paper. It's the type it's of. A, it's a, It's sort of like yeah thin wrapping paper yeah so i have 300 sheets of useless uh, gold um it's i'm actually making some giant easter eggs papier mache easter eggs at the moment because our village is doing an easter egg hunt so we're going to have gold easter <laughs> inside our house because then i can get rid of some of this that, stuff that's a brilliant idea your, yeah. your garden must be quite admired by people in the local village i would <laughs> All the artistic talent you've got in your household. Yeah, um, I don't know whether they admire it or just walk past our house going, oh, what's she up to this time? Because <laughs> I quite often put paintings out in the front garden for when, particularly during lockdown, when so many people were walking past. I, I did like a little garden gallery. and put it in Oh, the that's really nice. That's there, really nice. Which was nice because especially the kids, it gave them something to kind of, have a look at when they were out for their walks you know yeah yeah so, i think that's yeah. a brilliant idea right and so let's get on to the other brands then uh okay. with regards to um 
so yeah so right sublime is where i get most of my my stuff from okay but, so you uh, get these liquids as well or do you get those from no, somewhere else no these are these are sort of from an art supplier like jackson's okay. so this is called aqua bronze and it's from schminka okay but you could probably get that from Jackson's or any kind of yeah, one of those Jackson, retailers. Yeah. SAA, uh, yeah. you know, any any of the the online um, yeah. sort of art supplies, okay. and that is really good. Um, this one, which, as I say, is is an acrylic paint and is the goldest gold I've been able to find, is from the company is actually called Culture Hustle. Culture Hustle, okay. Mm -hmm. Or, or if you Google Stuart Semple, if I hold that up, can you read that? Uh, just about, yeah. 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 So I don't know, Culture Hustle, I don't know whether you've heard about this. There's, um, they make the pinkest pink paint. Have you ever heard the story of pinkest pink? No, no. no. You're, so, you're going to have to tell us now, Liz. Would you like me to? So, Please. Um, you know the artist Anish Kapoor? Yeah. Yeah. Um, who did you know the big sculpture at the Olympic Park and things like that? He um, patented or got exclusive rights to the blackest black paint in the world. I have so heard it, about that. I have heard yeah. about the black. It With, absorbs all light, doesn't all it? All light, and he is the only artist in the world who is allowed to use this paint, which really hacked off everybody else. Right. As surely we share. How can you? you have monopoly on a colour. So um, Stuart Semple, who runs Culture Hustle, made this pinkest pink paint. And if you want to buy it, you have to certify that you are not Anish Kapoor and that you are not going to give it to him and you're not in any way associated with him. And you have to sign this big, long declaration before you're allowed to buy it. <laughs> and it's this ongoing um, feud because Anish Kapoor did actually manage to get hold of some of the pink is pink and posted quite a rude gesture on, um, you know, Instagram or whatever oh, of really? his middle finger in the pink is pink type thing. So, yes, it's a long feud, but Stuart Semple makes the most amazing art materials. Right. Brilliant. At, at a price. That's yes. a problem. Yeah. I love that story. That's fantastic. I, I have seen a large <laughs> installation with that black, uh, blacker than black paint yeah. on. And it, it, it looks out of this world, really. It looks quite. It's like a black hole, isn't it? It, it is. It's... Yeah. It's incredible. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's incredible. Um, right. Have we got any other um, questions? We've gone through the brands, which is great. Um, and where you buy them. Trina said, when I taught some classes on illuminated manuscripts for our museum, I used the imitation so that the students could feel comfortable about practicing and not worry about the cost, which is a great way to do it. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think as, as Liz has shown us, actually, there's not a huge difference between good imitation. Obviously, you've got the bad yeah. <laughs> Amazon Chinese knockoff, but you know yeah exactly um but uh fantastic for easter eggs and wrapping easter <laughs> eggs are really good <laughs> but maybe not your art um uh, trina also said we've used some liquid gold leaf imitation that we picked up from our local hobby shop so that's mm -hmm. really good and i think it's good to practice with these things because if it is a different medium that you're not really used to um oh. Bobby said, I just found Culture Hustle and Stuart Semple on Google, which is great. So Oops. you can have a look at that. Um, and uh, Susie asked, do the Stuart Semple paints have to come from the US? No, he's, he's a, a Brit. It's, oh, he is a Brit. There we go, yeah. Susie. The UK um, company. Um, they make the most amazing mirror paint that it's just incredible that you um, you can paint on and literally your surface will reflect your face. It's like a mirror in a bottle, amazing. And they make things like diamond dust because you said how much you hate glitter. This is yeah. the glitteriest glitter in the world. And it's actually kind of ground glass. You do need to be terribly careful with it. Um, and that's amazing. So they make some really funky, funky products. Right. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just 
if you have anything that's got glitter, it always just gets absolutely everywhere, and you just yeah. can't clean it. It's always there, and you come, you go and sit down on a seat, and you can just see that shine in the cushion yeah. fabric. It's just everywhere. <laughs> I hate it. Um, <laughs> When's your birthday? And I'll make you an extra. Oh, thank you. Glittering card. Yes, thank you so much. Liz. Um, so, uh, and then Louise has asked. Um, G O M Wiley in the background is that from rights? G O M Wiley in the background. Oh, oh, hold on. No, this. Ah, oh, yes. This here, yes. Um, so this is my real gold leaf, and I was hugely lucky that someone had been asked to clear out an artist's studio. Sadly, she had died, and they were clearing out the studio. And they said to me, oh, we found some gold leaf and you're the only person I can think of who uses it. Do you want it? And I was like, oh, yeah, 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 thanks. <laughs> and I didn't realise it was the real deal. Right. And they gave me about 20 booklets of this. Seriously? Wow. Yeah. Uh, so, so I haven't, not that I haven't dared use it. It's just I'm waiting for the, the right occasion the right to use yes, it. This so actually weird. dates back. So it came in an envelope and the postmark on the envelope was something like 1960 something. So it's it doesn't this this company doesn't exist any longer. Um, but obviously this artist, and I, I actually thought it was incredibly sad. This artist had had this gold leaf since the 60s and maybe it was kind of too precious to use and i think that's really sad so when i yeah. snuff it you will not find any gold leaf in my studio because i will have used it just before you snuff it i'm gonna just <laughs> it might look terrible but i'm just gonna use it i'm just gonna go for broke um <laughs> No, yeah, well, I think, uh, yeah, that is, that's, that's a nice story. So I don't think you're going to be able to get that. I think if you search up that that brand, it, I don't think you'll, you'll no, find it. No, this isn't, but right, Rights of Limb have everything that you could possibly, possibly want. And other suppliers are available. I've just found them incredibly helpful when I've rung up and said, oh, I want to do this. What would you recommend? They've just been really super duper helpful. Oh, that's really nice. That's a good, nice, nice good tip. Yeah. Um, and so let's let's move on to some sort of partial demonstration thing just to kind of show people how we can how we can do that. So I'll change sure. the screen onto the, the board. Um, and I think was it? Um, yeah. Jacqueline said uh, earlier on, always find it difficult to get off the backing paper. So um, I don't right. know whether that's one of the things that we can show. I think that's... Ooh, um, to be honest, I usually use loose leaf because okay. sometimes um, I went through a phase, as one does, of um, collecting a lot of uh, really gorgeous old ornate um, picture frames from junk shops and antique shops, you know, the, in the days when you were allowed to go to non-essential shops. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which was obviously a while ago and quite a few of them I ended up leafing to to work in with whatever image that I'd put in it so like I did a oh I don't know a tawny owl that with lots of copper on it and then I go or copper leafed the the frame so it all worked together and I did a a red and I think and it had a big silver frame that I all leafed so I tend to use the loose leaf stuff um because I do, I sort of, but um, let, let me show you what, let me find, I won't use the real gold at this point. Um, Why, don't you, think, don't you think we're important enough, Liz? <laughs> well, frankly, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, how do I answer that? <laughs> yeah, I, because um, you've actually not got any art in front of you, you're just going to be doing it on a scrap piece of paper. Yes. <laughs> so um, what I do, and this is this is absolutely my patented uh, process, that just from experimenting. Anything that saves me time is good good news as far as I'm concerned. So gold leafing on top of white doesn't look brilliant in my opinion. Um, 
because when if you're doing a big area when you get little gaps in it which is inevitable the white shows through and it makes it look quite cool which is why you do the under layer of bowl so really you should paint first and then put the glue on but that's two processes so i have amalgamated that and what i tend to do is tint my glue so this is the when it comes out of the pot it's just white and I put a little bit of watercolour in it and tint it. So um, this case I've tinted it blue. I've got another pot that I've tinted sort of with some burnt sienna. And the, so that if you get little breaks in the, um, the gold leaf, that colour shows through. So that's, so that's my first frank, well, it's a cheat. Uh, it saves you one layer. Yeah. And then proper gold leaf people use one of these, which is called a gilder's tip. Can you see it? It's a yeah. very fine, and that's for picking up the gold leaf. Now, I didn't have one of those for ages, and that actually came from the artist's studio as well, which with my all those packs of things, which was lovely. So that is a gilder's tip. So I thought, how can I pick up these sheets without scrunching them? Um, because, I mean, you could try, because they are loose. I mean, you, you can pick the sheets up, so that's fine. But if you've got slightly sticky fingers or, or anything, you know, they, it might break up. And she said, looking around, I got this all straight before we came <laughs> on air. And, uh, of course, can I find it now? Oh, yeah, there we James go. asked, how do you tell the right side from the wrong? But I would imagine it's but they're isn't. both the same. Yeah, yeah there, there isn't, which is great. So I thought, hmm, these are so flimsy. If I found something with lots of static electricity, I could pick them up using static, uh, static electricity and it would keep them flat. And you know That's these document wallets that yeah. you use? They are the most static thing in the world. They're hideous, aren't they? Yes, yes. Yeah, so what I do and say, I don't know anyone else who does this. Oh, this could be a world first, everybody. <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> so, well, if it works. So I will. Yeah, there you go. Wait, well, that Pretty wasn't good. brilliant, actually. But so I tend to pick them up. And then you can get it pretty flat on your... Thing. So this is just a bit of mount board that I have put gold size on um, this morning. And literally you put your, your sheet on there. The reason it's got this post-it note on it is that I want to show you that literally anything will show through. Um, so if you get a hair trapped underneath, it'll show through. If you get a little bit of dirt or grit. So I just put that there so that you can see if I sort of let's hope that say so i typically this i've probably picked up the only document wallet in the world that <laughs> hasn't got static no look there oh it's not bad yeah no 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 that's fine that that's good <laughs> so i'm just gonna pop that over there and i can rub that down now if you were layering those and you wanted that to be layered overlapping so there was nothing yeah little... so i'm just gonna fill that ah, in. Okay, yeah, okay yeah you're one step ahead of me right. so what you can do is cut your sheets of gold leaf you need to make sure it's sandwiched between the paper um i am going to rip that but that's just me being super lazy Ooh, see shouldn't have done that um and then you can overlap it and, and because it's so thin, it doesn't show. Is that right? Well, no, I'm just going to show you. Sorry, I'm, 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 I'm virtue, bolting the stable door. Or whatever <laughs> the... So I tend to just put a bit of the tissue over the top and just sort of make sure it's stuck down. Yeah. And then you need a soft brush and you literally brush away the uh, excess and it just brushes away and you get a seamless join got you and these little bits that you're brushing away are called skewings isn't that nice 
Yeah. And if you get gaps, I don't know if you can see, I have got a little gap there. Yeah. That's called a holiday. <laughs> I just, I love the terminology that you get with different, um, well, not not crafts with well, yes, just different trades almost, and you can use your skewings to fill in your holidays. So <laughs> I have a little holiday there, and I would just put my little skewing over the top and fill it in, and then the excess just brushes off. Now, if you were being really precise, you shouldn't really touch it with your fingers. Um, you, probably should wear gloves because the acids in your fingers can cause it to tarnish but given everything else I'm doing it really doesn't matter um, and that would be now can you see if I hold it there that was where I had that square of paper underneath oh uh, yes you can see through. it behind can't you yeah so of course you could use that to your advantage and actually make up a pattern within the background if you want and bizarrely enough I said about hair showing through and I yeah. would like to say I did that on purpose but <laughs> there is actually can you see if I just move that there's a sort of c shape there and one of my hairs has obviously got caught up under oh there. yes we did just yeah. almost it yeah just there yeah, yeah. yeah there. there there so you have to be super duper careful wow. uh, of what you're doing now, if this was real gold, I would collect every scrap of that. Yeah. But I just vacuum it up because it's it's not worth saving because this is imitation. And I have to say, I've got a see-through vacuum cleaner, and actually watching all those little bits of gold zooming round in it is really nice. But maybe I'm just odd that way. Um, and it, literally, that's the process. I mean, how easy is that? So yeah. you've got. It's not tricky. And if you look closely, yes, you can see the joins. Yes, you can. That's right. But I, I make a, a virtue of that and I deliberately so um the piece on the wall behind me that could actually, we have a could we have a look at that? Could you bring that up so we could see where the, the laps are, the overlaps? Hmm, how are we gonna oh, do this? Because it's a wall. huge one. No, if, if I, I if I show yes, can you I, see that? Uh, the, okay. the deer, the leaping deer on the back, the yeah. square. So that's the squares of gold leaf. But I've actually, I did that deliberately because okay. I wanted that pattern, just a really subtle pattern in the background. That wasn't just me being incompetent. <laughs> um, I did do that deliberately. Got and you. the Got other you. sorts of things I've done is create a texture, say using texture paste um, on the canvas and then gold leafed over the top. So you just get a subtle texture or a subtle pattern in the background, but it's all unified by the gold. So that's another really nice thing to do. Or the kingfisher you've got on the wall behind you, I use crackle paste on that. Okay. Um, got really nice cracks in it. Then I gold leafed over the top. And again, that just gave a slightly different um, sort of texture and, and look to the piece so that was really nice and um you can distress it as well and because this has got high copper content if you put uh salt and vinegar on it right. <laughs> um, it tarnishes it and eats through it and you get a bit of verdigris the the, the greeny blue develop from the chemical reaction and that's really lovely so it just stops it being too perfect and shiny and you get a slightly aged or distressed look to it. So um, I've got all sorts. If you put ammonia on it, it smells horrible, but <laughs> it makes it darker and that fat can be really nice. Right, wow. All and, sorts and, of and obviously the, the size that you're putting on there, are there different mm. brands of size that you can yeah. get? Right, okay. Yes, it's just as say, I, I use this polyvine because it's the quickest drying that I could find. And to say patience isn't my greatest strong point. So um, it dries, it's a 15 minute size. Um, you can you get all sorts, if, but I say the slower it dries, 
the smooth of the finish you'll get. But given that I'm going to distress it anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Now, Louise has asked that that <laughs> leaping deer then that you've got behind you. Did you paint yeah. that directly onto the gold leaf, or did no, you? No, no. So you cannot put watercolor or ink. Well, ink just about goes on top, but you, it sort of pulls up, it beads up onto the shiny surface. So the process I have to go through is to paint the image first. I then put the size on the glue all the way around very, very carefully. Then I gild it, take off the excess to reveal the final image. Um, say if I was working in oil or acrylics I could actually paint on top of it but because I'm in watercolour I have to do the image first and then gold right at the end so it's yeah, just you, a different which, process. Which for your style because you like the watercolour bleeding out a little bit and uh, which I guess because you're having to paint around it with the size you lose a little bit of that you have to work hard to stop it looking cut out. Yes. Yeah. But what I tend to do is once I've done the gold, I might put some drops of ink. Um, the, the, the ink does adhere if you use it fully at full concentration. So because it, the shellac in it sort of lets it stick. Um, so I tend to put splatters and drops just to try and integrate the the subject with the background so that it doesn't become too sort of stark and cut out but it's a bit of a workaround right got you um now i know you released your second book last year and i know you're working on your third book at the moment i am but susie says could this be another book <laughs> I tell you, I see, see, um, if you are looking for a really good book. Okay, hold on a sec. There we go. Uh, this book is brilliant. So it's aimed for acrylic, but it's all about using gold and reflective techniques. So you can use some of these techniques with adjustment with water-based medium. But that's by a lady called Nancy Rayner, okay. um, American. Um get it on Amazon or whatever and it is such a good book um once I got totally addicted to gold I found it and I've sort of adapted some of the ideas some just won't work with watercolor but I, I've used some of those ideas so if you're looking for a book I'd really recommend that one brilliant brilliant yeah um now uh Jennifer's asked uh, have you used gold ink uh, yeah this is this is gold ink um this is a Windsor and Newton gold okay. drawing. Okay. Um I wonder if I've got a I've got a brush to hand. Oh, sorry, I've got everything to hand. It's all right, it separates out a lot. It's just a bit uh it's, it's just not as good. Yeah, that was the one you said looked really good uh, at the bottom of the, the glass. But yeah. I mean it, Yeah, it, it's it's a bit dull, isn't it? It's a bit see-through, um, you know, you you could build it up and if you're just putting in some very fine lines, it wouldn't be an issue. It would bring some, some glitter and some glint, but I once you've used gold leaf, it's very hard to go back because I think the shine you get off gold leaf is just second to none, so I must just wash that off my brush before that sets because that would be upsetting what actually should i show you the um if i can get the lid off that acrylic i could oh no actually don't break another <laughs> no no i oh gosh i can't i was going to show you by comparison oh yeah that would have oh, hold on no oh, it's coming coming great there great. we go perseverance um so this i mean that's an acrylic so it is naturally thicker. Yeah. Yes. Um, again, if I just try and hold oh, it, yeah. so you get a bit of a shine. And it just looks it looks more realistic from a colour perspective as well, doesn't it? Yeah, this is quite cold and green. Yes. And this is um, just a bit warmer. Yeah. So if you're buying imitation gold leaf, you want they, it comes in different colours, and the one that's closest to gold is two point five. 
So if you have an option, go for colour 2.5 is my top tip of the day for what it's worth. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Um, now, I'm going to... Oh, Jacqueline said, wow, the book is very expensive. <laughs> oh, is um, it? Yeah, oh, I don't that's know. That's because I've recommended it to so many people. Maybe oh. that, yes. <laughs> it's in such demand now, Liz, because of your recommendation. Oh, um, um, it certainly wasn't expensive when I bought it because I wouldn't have bought it. <laughs> <laughs> um, although someone did say they could uh, it was available on kindle so you might be able, it might be cheaper oh, if you that, oh so. right sorry about that oh no, no that's okay. a, that's okay maybe, maybe you can get it from your library or something. yeah trina's going to check her library so we've we've had yeah that. now jacqueline also uh, mentioned about um using transfer gold oh and, yes um so i know i know you had some of that but you don't normally use that so um I, I actually thought maybe what i could do is i could just show you a little snippet of a workshop we ran the other week with Khan griffiths where he used uh, mm. size and his transfer so you can just uh, do that i'm sure let me just check with him now Khan, is that okay if i just show you <laughs> yep i'm sure it'll be fine so um <laughs> Um, right, so let's do that now, and I'll I'll just share. I think I've got it to the right place. Um, so let's just do that. I'm gonna zoom so you the camera can see back. See, just there, he's put the size. I'm just gonna give a little yeah. nice fast brush stroke at the bottom here, quite dry for the size, just to gild that. And you see the looseness of the brush, and you should see that hole do another one because i don't think that came down very well right, so i can't even see where that's gone but we'll gild that area as well just sorry i was just another good reason to put color in your size you can actually yeah. see where you put it yeah oh. yeah that's a good idea please do help on that <laughs> no, just try and speed that up. he's just trying to dry it can even with this type go. of leaf grind it up with your brush on the paper so that you've got tiny tiny specks of gold and then paint those over the size and it will slowly coat the gold um what i will do here is this area is where it's going to go so i will just simply with my finger lay that down rub over there and then a big chunk of gold leaf is going to go down there and then using a very a dry brush just take away the areas where the gold leaf is that's not stuck so he's used it in quite a dynamic and then keep going with the brush and what that does is it is it burnishes the gold and i'll just show so yeah. there we go you can kind of see there how it's taking shape now with using the gold and he put the gold lines through the glass as well that you yeah. can see at the bottom kind of joining those lines so an, a, another way of using gold yeah. transfer leaf there to actually yes. make more detail rather than just putting the whole thing on but if you want to with the loose i mean it, the, the detail is from your gold size so i could put gold size on with a dip pen which i've certainly done when i've wanted very fine lines and you can still do that with the the, the loose gold because you just brush away if the glue isn't there it will not stick and you just brush it away so you can do that yeah 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 um brilliant so um is there anything else there that we've not lifted the lid yeah. off and de oh yes there is one important thing so imitation gold has to be sealed because it will tarnish with time because it's got this high copper content it will dull with time um so you have to either use a metal lacquer use a spray or you can get something like I'll hold this up there. The, uh, this is um, gloss varnish. So you want to use a gloss varnish because you don't want to get rid of the shine because you've worked really hard to get that shine. Um, or as I say, spray metal lacquer to really seal it um, because otherwise over the years it will get duller and duller. But it, I mean, it, we're talking a matter of years um, and you just need to be careful because it, it is very thin and it would rub away. So say you got carried away and gold leafed your or handrail on your staircase um over time it would wear off so you do need to protect it you can wax over it as well which is nice which gives a quite a mellow sort of old old gold feel to it which is oh, really that nice. sounds interesting yeah. what just with normal normal candle wax no 
No, sadly, nothing is ever normal, is it? Uh, um, it's with cold wax medium, something like Dorland's wax. Okay. Um, so it it's it won't yellow over time, um, and it's a acid free um, art wax, and you rub it in, and then you can buff it up and get a sheen to it rather than a shine. So that okay. that's a really nice way of doing it. Right. Um, and Tr Trina said that there's also some gold leaf pens, but sometimes they leak. <laughs> yeah. And again, you just won't get the shine. I mean, they're, you know, they're lovely. And I've used gold pens and I've used sort of like there, there are some really good um, gel pens, which if you just want a tiny little bit, it's a lot easier than getting all, all this stuff out and ending up with, you know, flakes of gold under your contact lenses but um it's i don't think the shine is the same i really don't think you can beat gold leaf sadly no. i've no, tried no. i promise i've tried the lot well we, we've we've seen just with showing us you can just tell over the air over the camera here just the differences between yeah that ink and the the genuine stuff the, the leaf it's really it really is mm. very vibrant isn't it um uh, janet asked could you use beeswax you know you're talking about the waxing could you use beeswax do you think no um so uh cold wax medium is made from beeswax but it's beeswax with a solvent so i'm just going to look and see if i've got anything to hand because i tend to have oh look there we go. Tub of the stuff. Let me just. So, um, oh, well, I'll do it on that one. Uh, okay. So, that it's sort of like a paste and it's soft, and you rub it in, let it dry for depending how thick you've put it on. Sorry, that <laughs> covered in beeswax. Um, and then you buff it up with a, a soft cloth. So it, it's a cold wax medium. So, um, okay. ordinary beeswax just wouldn't, it's got the. I think you can use different solvents. You could make your own, should you wish, from from um, beeswax and solvents, um, but but not just beeswax on its own. Um, and uh, Tony asked, will the lacquer or varnish damage the watercolour? Not. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay. Um, so that that actually is an issue because usually watercolour is matte you know that has no shine to it as, as a medium so if you are say spray varnishing you have two options you could either mask off the watercolour element of it and just spray the um the the, the metal the, the the gold leaf or you can say well, it's all shiny already, so I'm going to spray the whole lot or, or varnish the whole lot. And I tend to go for the, the latter option. When I started doing it, I would carefully mask off the actual image so that the image would be sort of matte and then the gold would be shiny. And I felt it was all too cut out. So now I actually treat the whole lot and I've had no issues at all. And, and Janet asked, you know, you were, when you were talking about the um, the stag behind you, the kingfisher <laughs> that you can see there, is that was that done in a similar way? Uh, yes. So the kingfisher, let me whistle that over there. Yeah. Um, yes, but on this, I deliberately um, broke up the gold leaf. Can you see the blue marks in the background? Yes. Yes. Um, so I deliberately. I've done a blue underpainting, then I put the gold leaf on top, but I deliberately broke it up so that came through um, right. just as part of part of what I wanted the final effect to be. Got you, got you. No, that's brilliant. And um, uh, Susie says, what an expert. Thanks so much for sharing all this. <laughs> that was really I've done a lot of experimentation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's, and it's so important. You have to, to know what works and what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And so you just have to do lots of experimenting. Yeah, um, Jennifer thing. asked, do you generally, looking at your artwork behind you, do you generally not put glass over your work? 
And this, uh, no, because it's so all these are watercolor or ink on canvas, and the joy of that is no glass. There's nothing between you and the image, and I don't have to bother about framing and dropping the glass and chipping the corners of the frame. So that's one of the reasons why I love watercolor on canvas. Um, but if it was on paper, yes, I would um, frame it traditionally under under glass unless I waxed it, because you can wax ordinary watercolours. I could show you one if you want to see a yeah, waxed yeah. watercolour. Yeah, let's see. And enjoy me being in my um, shed. <laughs> in your <laughs> studio, yeah. Yeah, hold a second. So... Great being live, see? We didn't know where we were going. We're seeing all these different things. It's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Over. Right. Are you going to so stick this... that on your ta table or are you going to hold it up? Oh. Okay. Uh, shall I hold it up? I'll put it on your table because then I think we'll get a better um, okay. better view. So, right, there we go. So, right, so this is pen and wash. Um, and it was painted on paper. And then I have stuck it on to, let me twist that over. So this is a cradle board made of birch. So it's a an art panel. Right. Stuck it on, trimmed it to size. And then I have used the wax. This has got, I think, two layers on it. So put the wax on. And again, if I move that about, hopefully you can see it's just got a very slight sheen to it. So it's, but you buff it up with a soft cloth, bit of elbow grease, and you get a lovely soft sheen and it deepens all the colors. And then, so that is watercolor on paper, but you could display it like that, no glass, and that's all protected against humidity because the wax sinks into the paper um, and that protects it. Right. So that's waxing a watercolour. OK. But as an alternative, sort of very contemporary way of displaying work. It's a really nice way of displaying your work. Yeah. No, that's a great idea. That's really good. For the, for the right image, you know, yes. if it's a very yeah. traditional, beautiful, delicate, misty, old landscape i wouldn't suggest this sort of presentation no. but because this is quite a sort of graphic you know pen and wash then it then it works i think yeah um, and you don't need any framing beyond that and there's nothing between you and the image so it's yeah. waxing watercolors is lovely that that um that painting actually reminds me quite a bit about uh, an artist we featured uh, just almost a year ago now Kay elliott and she does a lot of floral pen and wash things on yeah. uh, in design no. very yeah very very interesting yeah, i know i know Kay's work very well yes yeah, it's quite quite similar um yeah. yeah jennifer said wow love that uh so that, that was that was great <laughs> hasn't it been fantastic to learn all about gold in art i think it's uh really fascinating because it's one of those things that's a bit of a mysterious medium and you don't really you think oh god is it gonna be really expensive or whatever but actually trying to understand it it's not as bad as you think and actually uh, if you can just apply the glue and just put it on it kind of almost does the work for you almost doesn't it so yeah, I uh, you that should i <laughs> give away all the mystery <laughs> yeah yeah uh, now if you've got any words of thanks you'd like me to pass to liz um please now's your chance to just write those in the q a and i'll i'll um read those out yes, for or words of abuse you know whichever you prefer. <laughs> yeah, exactly exactly <laughs> um more importantly how did you find this week's meet and greet um did you learn something new and if you did well we've done our job but if you're watching this on youtube if you wouldn't mind giving us a thumbs up uh, this just ensures that uh, youtube recommends the show to more people helping us spread the benefits of creativity and inspiration to a wider audience young and older like so thank you um we'd also love to hear about your own experience with using gold it could be a picture of a recent painting you've created an experience that went horribly wrong or indeed wonderfully right so um, share your stories on our Facebook post relating to this show and a link can be found in the description below so the end of a another fascinating arty inspired show uh, before we go I'll go back to Liz and um, Let's read out some of these um, comments. So Jane said, brilliant. Thank you so much, Liz. Uh, Kim said, very enjoyable. Thank you. Jacqueline, uh, so generous with your knowledge. Thank you, Liz. Um, 
Uh, Jennifer also said, thank you, Liz, for an amazing, informative session. Learned so much. Um, somebody said, thanks, Liz, uh, for still another fun session. I know, two days on the trot. Can you believe it? Uh, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be ready for a lie down after this, won't you? Uh, Janet said, thank you both so much. The best Wednesday watch along. Um, brilliant. So we're doing good Tuesdays and best Wednesdays and fabulous thursdays oh god um, tony said brilliant literally thanks liz and john um and we've got a really interesting session from marion especially on the back of con's workshop thank you liz and john <laughs> jennifer said i'm ready for a lie down <laughs> and i don't blame you i don't blame you. um so am i so am i so um thank you thank you for joining us today uh really fascinating We've got some interesting other RT inspired things lined up in the future. Uh, we're going to be understanding all about paper with a handmade paper thing. We've, we're talking to some galleries and even some schools in uh, other parts of the world where we're going to understand how they approach art and everything. So there's some really fascinating things coming up and I, I hope you can join us for those too. So until next time, in fact, we're, we've got Jane Bettridge tomorrow. We're doing a, uh, a, a lovely uh, special arty class with Jane tomorrow. So I hope I'll see you there. But until then, it's obviously goodbye from me and Liz, thank you so much for your time and generosity. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. And a big round of applause. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks so much. Take care, everyone. Bye.